1975, you teamed up with David Bowie on Fame. Yeah, I was never in the London scene in the 60s, whereas George and Paul would be going around everybody's sessions all the time, playing with everybody. I never played anywhere without the Beatles. I never jammed around with people at all. Loyalty or it just didn't interest no, you? No, just shyness, insecurity, and uh, I couldn't go in a session and play like George plays. You know, I, I limited vocabulary on the guitar and the piano. So what could I do going in with Cream or, or whatever they were doing those days? So I never hung out in the clubs playing. I hung out in the discos boogieing and drinking and that, but I never did that bit. And then suddenly I was working with Elton and then Bowie was around and we were talking and that and he'd say come down and I found myself doing that. So he's fiddling around, he writes them in the studio. Now he goes in about four words and a few guys and starts laying down this stuff. And he has virtually nothing, he's making it up in the studio. So I, I just contributed whatever I contributed, you know, like backwards piano and ooh, and a couple of things like repeat of fame and then we needed a middle eight so we took some Stevie Wonder middle eight and did it backwards, you know, and <laughs> we, we made a record out of it, right? So he got his first number one, so I felt that was like a karmic thing, you know. With me and Elton, I got my first number one, so I passed it on to Bowie and he got his, and I like that track, you know. I must say I admire him, vast repertoire of talent the guy has. I was never around when the Ziggy Stardust thing came because I'd already left England when all that was going on. So I didn't really know what he was. And meeting him doesn't give you much more of a clue, you know. That's very true. That's so, very true. Because you don't know which one you're talking to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, uh, and, you know, we all have our little personality traits. So between him and me, I don't know what was going down. But we seem to have some kind of communication together. And uh, I think he's great, the fact that he could just walk into that and do that. I could never do that. You did across the universe you on that can album, do it. didn't you? Well, I could never go yes, and do that an elephant do. man. Well, you, but she's great. She tells me I can do everything. Mm -hmm. I can make a movie, you know, because you only have to learn two lines at once. I'm not talking about specifically <laughs> elephant man. I can't I even mean... remember my own lyrics, so I couldn't go on stage and remember all that. Do you remember doing Across the Universe with Bowie? You played guitar on that? Did I on play on that too? I think you did. Oh, yeah, my God, jeez, I did, yeah. But when I asked him what he thought of what I was doing, glam rock, he said, yeah, it's great, it's, uh, but it's just rock and roll with lipstick on. You actually um, wrote, recorded um, the song Fame. Yeah. Lennon worked on that with you. Yes, he did. Yeah. Tell me about that. It came out of a conversation that we had. I, I said, you know, I, I hate this manager that I've got. What can I do about it? You know, how do I get a new manager? And that's just stop right there. No management. You don't need management. I mean, he was the first artist I'd ever met who uh, told me that I didn't need management, that it was not necessary, you know, and, and bless him, forever after that, I, I did get rid of that manager, and I, I virtually managed myself my entire life. I've had business advisors and all that, but the idea of management has never crossed my path again since 77-ish. But was that an exciting thing for you, to work with John Lennon? 75, rather. Um, oh, hell, I mean, he was one of the major influences on my musical life. I mean, I, I just thought he was the very best of, of what could be done with rock and roll. And also ideas, how he was so, I mean, I felt such kin to him in, in, uh, in as much as that he would, he would rifle the avant-garde and, and look for ideas that were so on the outside, on the periphery of what was the mainstream, and then make them apply them in a functional manner to something that was considered populist and, and make it work. He would take the most odd idea and make it work for uh, uh, the masses. And I thought that was just so admirable. I mean, that was like making art work for the people and not sort of having it as an elitist, you know, thing. I, there was just so much about him that I admired. He was tremendous, you know. And next minute he says, hello, John, I'm doing the Cross the Universe. Do you want to come on down?